investigation into this investigation has to intensify. So let's talk more about this. I'm joined by CNN law enforcement analyst and former special agent, FBI with the FBI, Jonathan Gilliam, and CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney Philip Holloway. So, gentlemen, uh, good to see you again. So, Philip, you first of of those discrepancies that Rosa just played out, what are the three that most stand out to you? Well, it's striking because Rosa picked up on a lot of the same things I picked up on. There were multiple accounts uh, by these other officers on the scene uh, that McDonald lunged at Officer Van Dyke, and we saw that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there's one report, Fred, that says that three of the officers were battered by McDonald. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't that, see any contact. That, you don't see that on the video. It's not there. In all likelihood, it, it seems it didn't happen. Uh, and, and perhaps the biggest thing that st that stands out at me is that investigators who have reviewed this very thick police investigative file and ha have seen the video uh, came to the conclusion that the officer's account was corroborated by everything that they found in the reports and in the video. Mm -hmm. And to me, that just doesn't seem to make sense, given what I see with mm -hmm. this video and with this case file. So it underscores there's a concerted effort to try to stay in line with a story. Well, and, we and account, regardless of what the videotape, the dash cam video, which many are just seeing for the first time anyway, displays. Well, police reports must be accurate, they must be complete, they must be reliable. Otherwise, there will be no confidence whatsoever in the results of the investigation. I think it's clear now why the police union and others were so quick to come out and say this was a justified shooting because all they had was these preliminary the re reports, reports by the officers on the scene. Um, that may explain how this seemingly inaccurate, narrative, inaccurate mm -hmm. narrative got started. It doesn't explain why it got started. If this is some effort by the other officers to mm -hmm. circle the wagons in mm -hmm. defense of Officer Van Dyke, mm -hmm. then that's a big problem. So then, Jonathan, I I'd love to weigh in um, with you now. So if you if you know, and we're hearing it, you know, from Philip, if. if it seems as though the narrative, the story, the written report is going to be in contrast with what the dash cam video says. Does it simply underscore that there was a, a certainty, a feeling that this dash cam video would never be uh, revealed? No one would ever be able to compare the written report to the dash cam video? Uh, and I'm not trying to defend this at all. I know. Actually, people can on you Twitter start your response again? Because the top part of your response was clipped. Your mic was clipped. So start that sure. from the beginning. So I don't, I don't want people, again, to think that I'm going out to defend this shooting. I will say, though, if you back up the, um, the footage to this point right here where you see him uh, kind of going to a jog and takes the knife out and, and, you know, provocatively slings it, that actually was over his shoulder. He did sling the knife to the side. So that part in the statement is actually uh, true. Now, but what, he's walking away. It looks like he's walking adjacent. Yeah, you that's know, our. But that's and, our and away angle, from Fred. The officers. Mm -hmm. That's our angle. Remember the the SUV that just pulled up there. He's been chasing him for over 30 seconds already. So at this point, he starts to veer off to the right. There's another cop car that just pulled up in front of him. Mm -hmm. But listen, we can go through all this. You know, this different terminology and, and the different aspects of it. There are parts in those police reports that I don't see. I don't. I never saw him lunge at, at any of the officers mm -hmm. or assault them. I don't know. I heard there were reports earlier that uh, that he had stabbed a car, uh, one of the police cars, windows with two officers in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would call that assault. But uh, I think that, you know, this is another policy that could be fixed in police departments where when there's a shooting like this, mm -hmm. officers should be, as soon as the other responding officers get there, they should be separated and they should write their reports right there. Um, and then those reports should be collected. That way there's no time for any of these rumors to get started that they collaborated to come up with a story. Hmm. I guess it's still perplexing, though, if these officers knew that at least on one of these vehicles there was a dash cam of video, then why should there ever be room for inconsistency of what the dash cam video said to what's written in the report? Well, well, I've seen thousands of uh, police videos mm -hmm. in my career, and I can tell you there's always some degree of inconsistency. Uh, because but it would be slight, wouldn't it? it they're I mean, usually these slight. Are complete diversions correct. of storytelling. That's right. That's right. They usually don't diverge to this degree because you know officers uh, oftentimes write their reports hours later. They are under the effects of adrenaline. They get tunnel vision. So there's reasons why you might have slight discrepancies, but major ones like what we see here or apparently see here. Mm -hmm. Those are very, very troubling. Mm. Jonathan, you were about to say? 
No, I agree. That's exactly what I was going to say. And, and, I, and I think I still will stand by my statements from earlier when this happened that it's a, I think the initial shooting was justified. The way he was walking towards the officer, the provocative movement with the knife, the history for the past you know, few minutes that led up to that, all this stuff leads up to a good initial shoot. When he was on the ground, though, you said you know, initial. that's... So you said initial, initial but shoot. then yeah, as the shooting continues and he's on the ground, are right. you seeing the threat that Van Dyke described? The lunging, even when he's down on the ground, the lifting of the knife, mm -hmm. and that, that justifies threat? I, I, once he's on the ground, I think that the tactics that we're taught is that you stop, reassess, and if you have to reengage at that time, you reengage. I saw movement. But I didn't see any movement that was uh, that I where I thought he could actually get up. But again, you know, Fred, these, this only happened in 14 seconds. So the speed at which this goes down and the interpretation that this officer that's at a heightened threat level is going to have is different than we're going to have when we're watching this video. So, and it was a different angle also from the car. And again. Uh, that's not a justification of him shooting the guy on the ground, but those are things that, have, that will be taken into account in court. Mm. All right, 14 seconds, 16 shots. All right, um, Jonathan Gilliam, Philip Holloway, thanks so much, gentlemen. Appreciate it.